Ray McGuire of Citigroup, how are you? I am well, thank you. How are you? Good. Put that mic up, right up here. I am, I am well. How are you? Good. That's good. That's good for the Christmas mural right there. Um, so let me ask you, uh, what advice do you have, I don't know if you want to give this, to aspiring bankers? Aspiring bankers, I would say um, get familiar with the technicals. The technicals have to be uh, accounting, finance, and, and, uh, and I would say modeling. I would also say uh, be aware of what's taking place in the financial services industry. Uh, and that's now more broad than it was when I started. And when I started, it was, it was investment banking. And today, it is asset management. So investment banking as part of the overall ecosystem. But the number of opportunities that exist today far exceed the number of opportunities, opportunities that existed when I, uh, when I started. What's the biggest challenge that you faced in your career, Ray, and how did you overcome it? I would say the biggest challenge um, is being informed. I would say being informed, and, and what do I mean by that? You learn to communicate pretty effectively where I was trained. It didn't always go with the depth of knowledge, and so what you learn and what you have to overcome in this business is you can't just go broad. You have to go really deep. And clients are relying on you for the depth of your knowledge. And over time, that informs the most important uh, aspect that you have in client interaction. There are actually two. One is trust, the other is judgment. Mm -hmm. And let me ask you, do you have any kind of funny stories about generational differences, either when you were younger or now that you're a little bit older, dealing with younger people? I don't know that there were generational differences, and maybe I'm, uh, maybe I'm creating the halcyon days of, of yore, but there weren't a lot of generational differences then, in large part because the investment banking business was in its emerging phase. Mm -hmm. Today, um, it's a little different. Uh, the dress is a little different for one. I mean, you are... I'm an outlier. I'm, I'm more millennial than you today, yeah. so, and I feel good about that. I don't have on a tie. Um, you have on a tie, and... I don't feel good about that. Well, but I, uh, mine or yours? Mine. Okay, well, yours. The other thing you. is that, you know, they, there's, there's uh -huh. the, the, the sartorial uh, offerings are a little different today than they were then. Now they wear the pants with, 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 uh, with no cuffs, and they often don't wear socks so as not to... Uh, so as to allow the, the body to breathe because some of the pant legs are so tight that... You're into this. You're deep. All right, let me add, this is, this is for the, a niche question, though. What was it like working with Bruce Wasserstein and Joe Perella? Oh. The legends. Bruce Wasserstein and Joe... Bruce Wasserstein was... The late Bruce Wasserstein. The late Bruce Wasserstein, best m and &A practitioner on the planet. Dare Joe, to be great? No, beyond that. <laughs> uh, and Joe Perella is the best banker. And the combination of both of those, and you train and take notes, their styles were very different. But you train uh, under that, that mentorship, and you will learn the business. They were, they were outliers. They were the, the disruptors. Uh, when Washington Perella was started, it was a disruptive firm. It was intended to be disruptive. And I can remember in the first few months, we had a half a billion dollar valuation because uh, we had one investor who decided that the profile of the firm and the talent that it was able to recruit was best in class. Then la last question, Ray, and that is about Harvard. Uh, you're a Harvard alum. You went to what? The college, JD, and MBA, right? I, I am a member of what we call the 4-H club, or at least what I call the 4-H club, which is Hotchkiss, Harvard, Harvard and Harvard. Not too many of those, I suspect. Um, Harvard just won uh, a lawsuit that was brought uh, against them by a group um, that was going after their diversity policy. Mm -hmm. um, what was your take on that? My take on that was, um, it, first of all, it's a landmark decision, landmark in that it, it reflects the approach that Harvard has taken over the course of Harvard's admissions history 
uh, at least its recent history, and that is to, to identify and recruit and admit the best and the brightest who reflect the richness of the demographic, the diversity, the richness of the diversity. And Harvard has been exemplary in its, uh, in its mission to accomplish that. And so I think the decision by the court obviously was a right decision. Uh, it will be on appeal in my sense that given a 160 some odd page uh, opinion and how well thought through the court was on its decision and how uh, the plaintiffs never presented any physical witnesses Oops. that uh, the case hopefully, and I say hopefully, who knows in this environment, will withstand the review of uh, the next court. Great. Well Ray argued, uh, well decided. Ray McGuire, thanks very much. Thank you for having me. Hey investors, Zach Guzman here. Are you interested in learning more about the markets and getting the latest financial news? Well then click right here to subscribe to our Yahoo Finance YouTube channel. Get the latest up to the minute market analysis, big interviews in the world of finance, and information on how to manage your money every day wherever you are.